In today's video, I am going to be looking at five dividend stocks that you could buy and hold forever, especially during times that we're having right now, where the stock market just tends to be in a perpetual forever fall. Anyways, this is going to be an interesting video. Some of these stocks should be able to do well after this whole entire market downturn. So the first stock is CNR, Canadian National Railway. Now, this is going to be a company that will generally not have to worry about world wars, or at least Russia versus US, because, of course, they would probably get more business from the United States transporting tanks and stuff around, because CNR does operate some railways in the States. Anyways, from there, because they own them through subsidiary, subsid I can't say that word, anyways, Average volume is a million shares. I'm not saying buy this because of a war. I'm just saying this is a fantastic company to own. Anyways, dividend is only 1.6%. However, they do raise their dividend quite often. I actually owned this company way, way back when it was like in the $80, $70 range. And then I sold it because I clearly wanted to buy something else and wasn't very smart or thinking about the future. However, this stock has continued to go up throughout all of this pandemic happening. We've seen, of course, when the pandemic really hit there, oddly enough, hit a double bottom through a very long distance of time. And then since then, it has had a pretty strong run. Now, the one thing to keep an eye on is this. Right now, it's trading within a range. It's right now in the middle of that range. It probably will go down a bit more, especially with the entire market going down right now anyways. So I would say hold off just a bit until you get it probably, I'm gonna say maybe around the 150-ish range, which is not really that much of a cut if you were to buy it now and just wait out whatever's happening just to see what happens. It's up to you. Again, I do not own this company, so I'm not trying to push it in any sense of a way. Now, from there, the dividend rise raises are fantastic, especially during this pandemic, when we can really look at the pandemic hitting basically around March 2020, in my opinion, because that's when everything started to lock down. Since then, it's raised its dividend from 57.5 cents to 61.5 cents, which is a 4 cent raise. Not too shabby, it's roughly 8% with my random brain math. However, if we look at the raise before the pandemic, and about once a year they do raise, they raised from 45.5 to 53.8 cents, which is about an 8.3 cent raise on that initial amount. So that's actually pretty darn good. That's well over a 10% raise in one year. And if they can get back to those type of raises into the future, that looks very healthy. Now, as you can guess, 2020 was not a fantastic year for them. Of course, there is going to be higher oil and fuel costs to all of their operations, which will hit earnings. And we will see that when 2020 charts come out or 2021 charts come out however their revenue in the past has continued to rise however their earnings have continued to fall during that same period of time however i always like to say this whenever you've got revenue going up generally whenever you've got revenue going in the uptrend the earnings will eventually follow rev is king kind of like how kevin o'leary says it cash flow cash flow give me the cash flow revenue is king the more revenue you have coming in you can easily switch that into earnings at any time we've seen this with amazon we've seen this with every other company including tesla the next stock is brookfield asset management bam a in canada and this is again just about a one percent dividend so it's not massive however they're is a reason like you got to look for dividend growth and that is fantastic if you can get that the pe ratio of this is 25 versus others it's kind of a bit high in my opinion but anyways average volume of 1.6 million shares you can get in and out of the stock super easily by the way look at that 95 to today's graph like phew. But over the past five years, you're looking at a stock that's gone from about 30 bucks all the way to 67, well, technically even higher. Before this whole downturn, it was actually at 78, 52 week highs. So 
Again, like you're going 30 to $78 over a five year period. That is ridiculously amazing. Remember, there's no guarantees to what happens in the future for what happened has happened in the past. We just like to analyze the past to see what's going on. But again, always do your own research. Never trust a random person online. But again, like everything, went down in 2020 around March. And since then, it has continued to go up. Man, was it not an amazing time to buy it there. Like, holy. It doesn't exactly pay a steady dividend every single day quarter however what you can do with companies like this is you can say well may over may it's gone down however may over may again it's gone up and as long as you're looking at way in the past to today on companies like this then you'll actually see some pretty positive growth for example may in 2016 it was only an 11 cent dividend the only issue that i really see is of course the earnings misses that's kind of scary to me However, when we do look at their financials, we do see positivity on revenue. Of course, everything's not going to look good in 2020 for most companies, especially companies like this. And earnings, they can always turn earnings around. At least it was positive earnings, in my opinion. Um, but as long as the revenue growth can continue into the future, it's especially looking promising. CP, Canadian Pacific Railway, another fantastic company, and this one does pay a small dividend as well, but we're looking for growth too for futures. And anytime you're looking into the future, you're not necessarily always looking for the highest dividend today. You're looking at the potential for dividend growth over time, but as well as earnings growth over time, as well as just the stock price in general increasing. Because if you're looking for, like, let's say 20 years out, let's say you're 31 years old like myself, and you're looking out let's say 20 or even 30 years, if you want to see if you could hold the same stock for that period of time, which people like Warren Buffett have done extremely well doing with Coca-Cola and many others, then when you're looking at a stock like this, or like these, what I've been showing you, you're not always looking for the highest dividend. You're looking for the potential for huge growth into the future, and then also huge company and dividend growth too. Again, high volume, very easy to get in and out of. And again, we've seen some pretty amazing growth here as well. Five years ago, it was a $40 stock. Today, it's well over 90 and it's potentially going to continue to keep on going. Maybe, obviously the whole market is going down right now, but what we are looking at is a stock that has a doubling essentially over every five years. So that is promising to me. Because if you look at that potential over the next, let's say, 30 years. So when I turn 61 as an example, and we're looking at a stock that if it does double every five years, you're looking at essentially six doubles, which means that if you put $1,000 into it today, in five years, it will be worth 2000 Another five years later, it would be worth 4000 and then another five years later, it'll be worth eight. And then another five years later, it'll be worth 16,000. So over a 20 year period, just right there, it'll be worth $16,000 from your initial $1,000 investment. In theory, of course, whatever happens in the past is no guarantee on the future. And then if that continues to happen, 25 years from now, you'll be at $32,000 and then 30 years from now, like I said, you'll be at $64,000. In theory, of course, if it continues to double every five years. So $32,000, or what was it, $64,000, from an initial $1,000 investment is absolutely fantastic. And if you're getting even a 1% dividend during that time, now that 1% dividend in uh, on $64,000 is $640 which is absolutely amazing. Think about it. If you put a thousand dollars into a stock in 31 years from now, it's or 30 years from now, you're now getting $640 or what's equal to $640 essentially. That's pretty good because now you're essentially every two years, you're getting back your initial investment and you've already gotten that back anyways from the dividends. And it's basically gone 64 times higher. This is why you want to invest in stocks for the long term.
Stocks like this, if they continue to perform the way they have been in the past, look really darn good. And they raise their dividend. This is why I really like CP, Canadian Pacific Railway. This is absolutely amazing. If we look at it from year over year, December to December, it's the same. Obviously, there's been a little bit of a pandemic that's been happening. But if we look to the year before, 16.6 cents to 19 cents. And then if we look to the year before, 13 to 16.6. And then even the year before, 11.2 to 13. It has a dividend raise every single year. This is absolutely fantastic if we cut out the pandemic. They've had recently a beat and a miss on their earnings. And they have, again, positive revenue growth other than 2020. And they have fantastic earnings percentage versus CNR. This is a great company to be in. Pretty much any Canadian bank, I'm going to tell you right now, does extremely well over the long term. BMO is my choice right now as one of the top because they just purchased a massive amount of banks, I guess you could say, in the States. They've done really well recently on the stock market. They've made me a lot of money recently. Yes, I do own BMO, and their volume is fantastic. Their dividend is actually higher because of a recent raise of dividend. And this is why I always mention to buy all the banks because some banks will go sideways for a period of time like this and then of course accelerate like we've seen recently with pretty much any bank however during this same period of time a bank like Canadian Na or National Bank of Canada NA has actually gone up during that time fell just like all the others and has also rocketed to the top so if you were buying national bank during that time you were actually doing better than if you were buying bmo during that same period of time unless you were strategically buying at the bottom and then buying at the double bottom there then that would have been absolutely amazing yes they've been rise, raising their dividend and uh, they have raised it 25 percent from here into the future so yes fantastic fantastic company I remember saying this during the recession, but the banks will not be affected because they make monthly earnings from checkings accounts and, of course, loans that are going to still continue to get paid. And I'm going to tell you something that was really, really interesting, and that is with the Canadian banks. Yes, they had to put their loans on hold for some people. I looked into it because I was like, well, hey, if I could get a little bit of a loan delayed, then I'm going to be looking pretty darn good. And then I looked into it and read the small little print at the bottom that said, yeah, you can put your loan on hold, but guess what? You're still going to be incruing interest during that whole time. And I said, hell no, that's not happening. I am not paying any more interest than I already have to. And I decided to pay off the loan. But anyways, uh, from there, uh, these people who put their loans on hold, if, I hope they read that because their interest is going to be ridiculously much higher because now all of that let's say one year or six months or however long they put their loan on hold that was interest that was accrued on that amount even though they didn't have to pay it yeah that's how the banks are going to be making even more money it's not just the fact that they're they're charging an arm and a leg for a checking account they're not just charging MERs on mutual funds and ETFs but also they are now making even more money on interest because of these these helping loans that they gave out, or at least what they gave, these, uh, we'll pause the payments, uh, they were making even more money. You really think that a bank would look at the government and say, yeah, you know what, let's go and you know what, we'll, 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 we'll play along, we'll have fun. You think that they would say, yeah, sure to that? You think they would say, yeah, sure, to the government when the government says we need to pause these uh, loan payments? No, they would say, hell no. But guess what? When they say in the small little print, you're still going to accrue interest, guess what? They're going to say, hell yeah. Yeah, here, pause. whoever wants to pause their loan, you can pause your loans. That's totally fine. And then we're just going to charge you interest even more. And that's what happened. And, of course, I feel sorry for the people who paused their loans who didn't necessarily have to. And, of course, now they get screwed because they may not have read the small print. Um, but I had a loan. I paid it off because I didn't want to put it on pause and I didn't want to pay it anymore. So I just paid it off.
but I'm lucky maybe. That's why their revenue is going to be and their earnings are going to be going through the roof into the future. They're going to be making more money on the money that they already loaned out. CIBC is another one of my favorites mainly because the PE ratio is really low. I always like to try and buy the three banks that have the three lowest PE ratios in Canada. We have the big six banks here and a lot of their loans are backed up by the government or insurance companies and because of that they generally all are pretty safe. Most, usually two or three of his big six banks will have a bad time for usually a year, two years, or sometimes up to three years. And you can really see that with their PE ratios. You can get in on them, and then they usually have a good spike. This one's currently at 4% dividend as well, which is really good. And they raise their dividends usually between 4 and 8% a year. Recently, it was higher because they had to pause them for a while while still making a killing. This is one of the banks that was actually not doing so well, at least stock price-wise, before the, uh, the the pandemic. But since the pandemic, their stock has just gone through the roof. This is that recent dividend raise that is just absolutely fantastic, and we're gonna we've seen that with every single other one of the Can big six Canadian banks. Again. They had lower revenue in 2020, which is no big surprise. They had slight raise in revenue in 2018-19. However, yes, another big bank with huge revenue, huge earnings. Again, this is going to get even bigger into the future, depending on how many people put their loans on hold. Obviously, their earnings were pretty good until the last quarter as well. Something to really keep in mind with the Canadian banks, however, is... When interest rates go up, yes, the banks will do a heck of a lot better on their loans. They're going to be making more money, which is good. However, there is an issue with that, and that is when we're looking at politicians like Pierre Polyavera, I can't say his name, but either way, when we're looking at politicians like that, and he's really breaking down the numbers as to how many people over the past year or so have purchased a house with a mortgage on a variable rate, it's actually a little around 50% have a variable rate. And because of that, yes, they do test these loans at a 5% rate. I understand that. So, Yes, you may go from a, a 3% to a 3.5% mortgage or a 2.5% to a 3.5% mortgage over the next year or so if you're on a variable rate. I understand that. However, yes, they did test it at 5% to say, yeah, you these people are good. But guess what? If you're looking at the interest rate going up 1%, and then, on top of it all, you've got food that's gone up 5%, fuel that's gone up 33%. You're looking at everything else that's also increased in price. Then that 5% test rate is no longer something that is valid, in my opinion, because now if everything's gone up in price, including your mortgage... What are you going to start to really look at cutting back on? Are you going to start looking back at cutting back on food? Probably not. People love food. Are you going to cut back on uh, your cable bill or whatever else? Probably not. Are you going to cut back on gas? I don't think you can because you have to go to work. People have to go to work. People aren't like me who get lucky and run a YouTube channel from home. But people have to go to work. There's, there's so many costs that have gone up in price, and now I go to the store, and the shelves are empty. And the water, half the, the case is half the size for double the price. So that means it's four times more pricier. A $1.69 big 24 case of water has now turned into a 12-bottle case of water for $3.69. That's, oh, that's basically double. So double for half the amount. So really, it's not this 5% or whatever it is, 7% raise on food is BS because just water alone has quadrupled in price. So I don't know where they really get in their numbers from. Maybe there's some things that just overall are the same price and there's other things that are higher up in price. Chicken seems to not have gone up in price at Walmart yet. Uh, I just bought a $20 worth of chicken, but I love chicken. Either way... This is crazy. This is not looking good. If they raise interest rates, Trudeau doesn't do anything about inflation, which I don't think he can do anything. And house prices continue to go through the roof because people just aren't selling. Well, guess what? What's going to happen 
one of two things is going to happen. Either shit's going to hit the fan or we're going to be going into a potential recession or there's just going to be a, such a flood of houses thrown onto the market because people just can't pay the mortgage, which I might be able to pick up a house that just makes me happy. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. These are my thoughts. I kind of went on to a rant at the end. I've been recording for 23 minutes. That's crazy. I hope that you've enjoyed. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.